You're listening to Where You Live with Gene Sullivan. That's right. This is Where You Live with Gene Sullivan, and I'm broadcasting from the True North Painting Studios. The show is also brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency, and Extreme Exteriors. Before we get into our next uh, topic here, I'd like to let our listeners know that we've got a free gift for you. We put together a bi-monthly newsletter called What's New. And a lot of the topics that we cover on the show are covered in further detail. Uh, People that we have on the show are also people that uh, write for this uh, um, newsletter as well. All you need to do is give us a call during the week at New Concepts, our number 952-922-2500. That number again, 952-922-2500. Ask for Lori, and she'll make sure that you start receiving your free copy either electronically or by mail. Uh, Let's go into uh, uh, another story here. This one is from uh, the state of Oregon. And this came out of Eugene, Oregon, from uh, the Register Guard. And uh, it apparently in the city of Eugene, there are some lofty goals that leaders of the city has for the for everyone living in Eugene, which will mean basically that rules will apply to some folks, but not to others. Uh, what are we uh, talking about? Uh, we're talking uh, about public leaders in Eugene, Oregon, believe uh, in a very lofty goal. That goal is that uh, the city must grow more densely within the city while protecting the character of the neighborhoods. They were being concerned that there's too much sprawl, that the city limits are going out too far. So what we need to do is we need to try and concentrate and make uh, living for uh, people in the city of Eugene more densely populated than it is now. The problem is, how are you going to go about taking care of this issue? Well, the people in the uh, city council in Eugene, Oregon, had this idea. They have this term that they call uh, infill development. Have you heard of this before? Infill development, the city's method to reach their goal, encourages infill infill development. And uh, they're finding that there are unintended consequences and a backlash that's being generated because of that. Well, what you have is, of course, in any city, you have uh, every piece of property is zoned a certain way. Uh, For example, an R1 zone is considered R for residential, one for how many units can be on that parcel, one unit. You can have something that's uh, designated R2 that would allow residential and would allow a duplex, R4, I think you get the idea. It allows for a fourplex. Then they have a zoning for commercial property, too. And the reason why the city has things set up with uh, specific uh, policies in place in terms of what to expect with um, how a person can operate uh, a piece of property is because people want to be able to know uh, who they're going to be living next to, what's going to be next to them. Uh, Is this a place where they want to live? I mean, obviously, you don't want to have very closely associated in an R1 area, residential single family home, uh, something that would be uh, designated for commercial. Uh, Because uh, now you have uh, uh, big 18 wheeler trucks that are coming in and out. And that can uh, be uh, something that could be a a bit of a problem if you have uh, young kids that are running out and playing in the neighborhood. So the city tries to plan. Well, now the city of Eugene, Oregon says, you know what? We need to do what's called infill development. We need to fill in uh, to get things more densely populated. That's how we're going to take care of urban sprawl. So essentially what they're saying is we're going to allow where there's been just one single family home. We're going to now give those people who want to put up other structures, other small cottages. And I mean, not just one. They'll allow them to even put up uh, uh, a couple of them. 
uh, if it's going to be used for rentals. And um, they say because this is going to help the area to become more densely populated, and this helps us with our goal of not seeing uh, urban sprawl take place. Uh, problem is, uh, when people get a mindset of, and this happens in politics quite a bit, we've got to do something. And, and, and so the people in Eugene, Oregon says, we need uh, the city more densely populated. We've got to do something. Well, instead of being deliberate, like I just talked about it, uh, with our last uh, story, uh, you see the law of unintended consequences, unintended consequences in action. And what are some of those consequences when it uh, comes to infill development for the city of Eugene? Uh, well, uh, for example, even though uh, the city of Eugene uh, wanted to address the student housing around the campus of the University of Oregon, this had uh, this had a big, uh, big negative factor. So uh, already you have uh, around any type of university, you have a lot of housing that's going to be rental. You have that around here at the University of Minnesota. When you stop and think about what is the life of the average uh, college student or student at the university, uh, it's not necessarily to be there year around. And so you have uh, people that are moving in and out in a more transient nature. And uh, now on top of that, you take this infill development uh, value that the city of Oregon said, and let's place that on the homes around the University of Oregon. What was taking place? Why, you saw a number of neighborhoods that were being degraded and trashed because of uh, the higher population of, of people. Uh, like I said, the student population tends to be a little bit more transient. And the people who were families, who were homeowners uh, in the area, uh, here's a quote from one homeowner. Her name is Carolyn Jacobs. She was a, chair, a chairwoman of the Neighborhood Association uh, around the South University of the University of Oregon. And she, she said, because of this, we now have been bleeding owner-occupied residents, and it is continuing to go on. What they're saying is that people are leaving. The thing that they wanted to see actually take place, which was people living in the city, uh, having it being gentrified, having it being a place where people could be out walking and strolling, um, taking walks, uh, things going down to the neighborhood coffee shop, all of the things that uh, city planners have in their mind of this wonderful uh, thing that, that would take place was not taking place because the very law, the very thing that they were putting in place was actually having a negative result. And uh, they saw that uh, it wasn't something that uh, people wanted. Here was something else that's uh, very uh, interesting. Uh, and that is that, you know, there were neighborhood leaders who were uh, also saying uh, that lived in other parts, not around the University of Oregon. They were saying, uh, yeah, these are great goals. We should have infill development uh, for the city of Eugene. But we shouldn't have it in our neighborhoods. Really? They, they said, uh, yes, uh, it would really be a, a bad idea. Here's a quote from one of the neighborhood leaders who asked that the uh, city council uh, spare three specific uh, neighborhoods. And I've got to tell you, these are probably ones that are probably where more higher end uh, real estate is being owned, uh, is proposing that the infill development uh, goal of Eugene, Oregon be temporarily temporarily exempted in these neighborhoods while still imposing these, these tough new building restrictions on everyone else in the city. Here's what was said by a woman by the name of Alyssa Hansen. A lot of uh, people's concerns are very valid 
about is what, what is happening in these neighborhoods because of infill development. And it just seems like uh, the right opportunity to take some time out in our neighborhoods. Yeah, that was right, in our neighborhoods, not everywhere in the city. So in essence, what you have is you have people who are saying, we want you to, uh, we want you to do as we say and not as we do. Uh, we've got, again, an exemption here. And uh, I'd like to talk about this a little more, but we're going to take a break right now and talk about this great I, lofty goal of infill development with Eugene, Oregon. More after these messages. 